Hey everyone, it's Stephen here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you could be one property away from becoming financially free. And that probably would cost you the same amount of money as this one bedroom flat in Wimbledon above some shops. That one property is a commercial property. And I hope to bust on this that you may have about that commercial property investing in this video. So if you've thought that you couldn't afford a commercial property, or you just don't know how to get into commercial property, or the deposits are too big, or the finance is too expensive or out of reach, stick around. As I walk you through each of these perceived problems to help you better understand that you could potentially be one property away from becoming financially free. Others may and probably do charge you a lot of money for this information, but you can get access to it for the bargain price of I like. For those of you that don't know me, I bought my first commercial property back in 2013 in the US, which reasons why we don't have <laughs> enough time in this video to explain why I started in the US, but I did. And I bought that for $375,000 with only $75,000 down without a bank loan. And that generated me $3,600 a month. Two words, seller finance. Now I've since gone on to buy a mixture of commercial property from retail, office blocks, industrial and commercial flex space warehouses that allowed me to quit my IT job a long time ago now. A lot of property investors feel that commercial property is out of their reach and this could be because they simply just don't know enough or that they see the risk as too great. And I felt the same because I bought my first investment property in North London, and that was years before I bought my first commercial property. And it's hard to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. But I knew that if I could push myself outside of my comfort zone, that's where the magic happens. I was lured into commercial property investing because of the attractive long leases, the fact that the tenants pay all the outgoings and that the rent is paid quarterly in advance. All I have to do is create an email with an invoice attached to make sure that the rent is paid on time. Being a bit of a tight task, I started self-managing my own investment properties in London. And this meant that I was dealing with calls all the time, 24 by seven, I had to be available. I was looking after check-ins, check-outs, reading the meters and organizing trades that never turned up. I just felt there had to be a better way. So I looked at the Forbes rich list and I thought to myself, these people that are on there that make their money through property, I bet they're not mucking around with single let residential property. That's right, they make their money through commercial property. Donald Trump, Donald Brent, and John Gandel, they're not mucking around converting single let residential property into HMOs and getting called out because the fridge freezer's broken down. Stop yelling, okay? I'm not yelling. You're screaming at me. I'm just standing in front of the fridge. Shut up and sit out, just sit out. They made their money through hotels, office blocks, and shopping centers. Commercial properties are everywhere in our lives, and without them, the whole economy would grind to a halt. Just like we need a place to live, businesses need a place to operate from. There's three main reasons why I personally love commercial property as an investment vehicle. The gross rent is the net rent you get to keep. So where this comes from is that the actual lease associated with that commercial property to that tenant stipulates that everything to do with that outgoing, all the expenses associated with that property is the responsibility of the tenant. And this is called a full repairing and insuring lease in the UK and a triple net lease in the US. Leases normally span for years, not just for 12 months like they do in a buy to let property, and it's extremely passive. What I mean by this is that all you have to do with a commercial property, if you buy the right type of commercial property and have the right type of lease in place, is send a quarterly invoice to make sure that the rent is paid on time. There's no phone calls about maintenance or repairs. There's no phone calls about leaky roofs. There's no phone calls about blocked toilets. There's no check-ins or check-outs. There's no mold or damp problems. All of these things are taken care of by the tenant. And these things are the norm, not the exception to the rule when it comes to commercial property investing. But I hear you say they're so expensive and that you need a large deposit when you're buying commercial property or so that's what you've heard. So let me show you an example to kind of bust that myth a bit. So I'm gonna put in here that the price is 200 grand and we're just gonna look across the whole of 
England. And I'm gonna put the minimum price at just like 20 grand. Just by looking at all property types, all commercial property between 20 and 200 grand, it comes back with 1,758 properties. Now, if we wanted to go and look at those properties, we can just go into a map view and then just start to zoom down and have a look at those properties. And we can see when we're looking at the map here is that those properties are all over England. It's not that they're congregated in one specific area. So you've got the opportunity to buy commercial property in any part of England based on any type of budget that you've got. You can just zoom in to the area where you live or the area that you'd like to invest in and then just have a look around at those types of properties and see what they are. And then if we wanted to change that amount, let's say we want to make it 150 and find out what properties there are for 150 in England. Again, we've got 1,244 results that are commercial properties that are between 20 grand and 150,000 pounds. Again, all over England. And again, you can just kind of zoom in and see where you'd like to invest. And commercial properties are actually cheaper than residential properties when you compare the price per square foot. So that means you can buy more commercial property for your same amount of money than you can when you're looking at residential property. For buy-to-let properties, you need at least a 25% deposit. Sometimes it's more than that, but generally, anyone can get started with a buy-to-let property and have a deposit of 25% value of the agreed purchase price or whatever the price of the property it values up at. With commercial property, the purchase price is gonna determine, how, again, how your deposit amount, and the deposits that you need are 30% as a best case scenario. Worst case scenario, it can go down to as much as 40%, but it's somewhere in between 30% and 40%. So for example, in 2021, the commercial mortgage market was a bit more tentative because we were just coming out of the pandemic. So the market sentiment was that they didn't really want to lend too much on commercial property because there was a lot of unknowns with stuff being closed down. And people, not, people were working from home. And so buying offices, buying retail, they were seen as more riskier by the financial market. And so it was quite common then to only get a 60% loan to value um, commercial mortgage for those properties. So you'd have to find a 40% deposit. But now the market sentiment has changed. And I'm seeing lots of places now offering 70% loan to values, commercial mortgages, and you just having to find a 30% deposit. So when it comes to commercial property, all you really need is an extra 5% deposit to buy a commercial property. And that commercial property is a bigger property square foot compared to an equivalent residential property on the same amount of money per square foot. So with commercial property, amazingly, you actually save money on stamp duty compared to buy-to-let property investors. So since April 2016, buy-to-let property investors have had an additional levy of 3% on top of the usual stamp duty charges for them to buy a second home, like a second property that is gonna become an investment property. And so with commercial properties, you don't have to pay this additional 3%. The rates are even cheaper than normal residential stamp duty rates as well. And so yes, we're having to pay an extra 5% deposit down, but we're actually saving 3% on the stamp duty fees if we buy commercial property. So let me show you an example if we were to buy a 300,000 property comparing a residential stamp duty cost and commercial stamp duty charges. So if you were to buy a commercial property and it cost you 300,000 pounds to buy, you'd only pay 4,500 pounds in stamp duty fees. If you were to buy the same valued property, but you're buying it as a buy-to-let property, you'd actually pay 11,500 pounds in stamp duty fees. So that's a saving of 7,000 pounds just there on the stamp duty differences. So if we then look at our deposit again, and we're saying 5% of 300,000, which is an extra 15 grand we've got to put down, 
we can deduct seven grand from that and already we've only then got to find an additional eight thousand pounds to buy our three hundred thousand pound commercial property and don't forget and with commercial property the gross rent that you get is a net rent that you get to keep but then you may say about legal costs. So yes, with legal costs, they do cost more when you're buying commercial property because commercial solicitors price gouge you when it comes to that type of thing for whatever reason. No, it's because commercial property, there is a bit more involved compared to uh, buy to let property. So, you know, for example, a buy to let property might cost you anywhere from 500 pounds to a thousand pounds, depending on the location and the cost of it. With commercial property, again, it comes down to the price of that commercial property, but for 300,000 pound property, you might look to pay between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds in legal fees for a commercial solicitor. So yeah, there's an additional, additional maybe thousand pounds that you might have to pay for buying a commercial property as part of the legal fees. But what about this one property to become financially free? So I'm gonna run through an example to demonstrate how this one property could potentially make you financially free. So we start by looking at the average UK full-time salary, which at the moment is around 35,000 pounds. So let's look at an example. I found this place in Bournemouth, Lectatonian Guy. You may have had your hair cut there. This place is up for 350,000 pounds with a 35,000 per year rental income on a 10 year lease from 2021. There's a rent review and a break clause in the lease, which is normal. And that's at the halfway point in 2026. So three years from the time of this recording. And if you compare that to the one bed flat that we saw in Wimbledon above the shops, that one rents for a 1500 per month, but then you have to pay ground rent, service charge, maintenance and repairs, pay for insurance, be available 24 by 7, 365 days a year. With the Tony and Guy place, you earn £2,916 per month before taxes. And that property, you don't have any maintenance or repairs, you don't have to pay any buildings insurance, you don't have to worry about any of the bills, or the business rates or anything like that. It's all paid for by the tenant and that's what's stipulated in the leases for repairing and insuring. They have to make sure that the property is to the same condition it was when they went in. All you have to do is send them an invoice every quarter to make sure the rent's paid in advance. You can even then automate this so you only have to do it once and schedule it to be done every quarter. So I hope you can see with commercial property the gross rent that you get is the net rent that you actually get to keep. Can you see how owning commercial investment property will get you to achieve your financial freedom goals a lot quicker than it would residential? Granted, there's gonna be a commercial mortgage in there somewhere, which we're gonna to get to in a moment. Let me know in the comments below why you don't wanna buy commercial property and you want to buy residential property if at some day you wanna be able to be financially free and quit your job. I'd love to know. So a common question that a lot of people will ask is what commercial properties are the best ones to go for? So when it comes to what types of commercial properties are best, there's two things that I specifically look for. And I ask myself these two things. The first question is how much cash down, for how much cash back, and for over how long a period of time until I realize that. And the second point is can I manufacture some type of profit by buying that property that enables me to refinance it down the track so I can pull some money out and then go again. The development angle on a commercial property could be that you wanna extend it so you've got additional commercial lettable space, or it could be that you wanna convert some of it from commercial to residential, or all of it from commercial to residential property, or it could be that you wanna add additional residential component to that commercial property, such as adding another floor to it, and that's all gonna be residential. This principle is the same as when you buy a house and see it's got potential to be extended out the back or extended into the loft, or any of those types of things where you're adding some additional value to that property in a short amount of time. There's potential there for you to manufacture some growth and increase the value of that property. And I look at commercial in the same way as a lot of people would do with residential that they wanna manufacture some profit. So when buying commercial property, don't just look at its current use and just think that's all it's got as a potential. Look at what the potential could be in the future if you, look, if you could do some kind of development to it. 
what's the highest and best use of that property in that particular location. For example, retail high streets are changing, and this isn't because of what just happened with COVID. The writing was on the wall when Amazon started offering fast shipping with one and two day time frames for shipping and free 30 day returns. Secondary retail parades are less important now with online sales accounting for 21% of retail sales globally. So right now there's less need for the number of shops that they were, especially in those secondary retail parades. And those places are becoming ripe for conversion to residential. I've recently bought retail shops and offices, but I've also bought industrial property like warehouses and flex spaces, which are made up of office space as well as a warehouse. All of them have pros and cons, but my first priority is always to generate cash flow. So I look at what the property is actually generating from an income. So how much cash down do I make, have to put down? How much cash back am I going to get? And then over what period of time? And then as a second priority, I'm looking at what's the opportunity to further develop that property and manufacture some quick profit in the future. So to buy commercial property without buying it all cash, you're gonna to need to get yourself a commercial mortgage. <laughs> and so with a commercial mortgage, there is enough lenders out there for it to be competitive still. But yes, commercial mortgages are gonna be slightly more expensive than a buy to let mortgage from an interest rate perspective, as there's not as much lenders as there are with the buy to let space with commercial property. So what that equates to is that you'll generally pay at least an extra 1% on um, the interest rate when it comes to commercial property, but you're definitely making more than 1% uh, profit. Your return is definitely over 1% more than when it comes to commercial property when you compare that to a buy-to-let property. Commercial lenders are essentially looking at the type of property, the location, and the tenant and the lease associated with it. Those are the key things that they'll be assessing to determine if that's something that they're willing to lend money on. You can get interest only and repayment mortgages when you're looking at commercial mortgages, and these typically run from 20 years to 25 years. There's not many that go above 25 years. I'm happy to share the details of my own commercial broker with you. You can get the information from my website, which is probablyinvestingwealth.com, and it's gonna be in the resources tab. With commercial lenders, the one thing that they do require is that you have some kind of property investing experience. So if you've never bought a buy to let property yet, commercial property may not be for you because you're gonna to struggle to maybe get a commercial mortgage. If you wanna buy a commercial property debt free, you don't need to worry about that. You can buy it without having any investment experience at all. There's gotta be some negatives, it can't all be gravy. And so with commercial property, the negatives are really business rates and VAT, but there's ways around both of these things. So when it comes to commercial properties, commercial properties have to pay business rates. Normally the business rates, well, they are always put in the lease that the business rates are paid for by the tenant but it comes a point when the tenant leaves and you've got a vacant commercial property. At that point, you're liable for business rates, but only after a period of time, and that is three months. So they give you three months grace period before you're liable for business rates. So then you've got to pay business rates on an empty property. There's certain types of properties that you don't pay business rates on, which I'm not gonna go into on this particular video. With VAT, if the property is registered with VAT, this means that you have to pay VAT on top of that property. But if the property is tenanted, therefore it's an investment property, you can then buy that property without paying any VAT, even if it's registered with VAT. And I've done a whole video on how to not pay VAT, which you can find in, on my channel, and I'm also gonna to link to it at the end of this video. So they'll explain to you exactly the steps that you take to go through to not pay VAT on top of a property. Essentially what you're doing is you're transferring that property as a going concern. And by doing that, you, the HMRC don't then charge you VAT on that transaction. Property prices can be impacted by the rental income. So this is less likely to occur in major cities, but it's more in regional areas. So if you've got a tenanted property and that tenant moves, then that will impact the value of that property. On the flip side of that, if you buy an empty property and you get a tenant for it, 
that can dramatically improve the value of that property and you could then sell that property onto an, another investor. If I've piqued any interest in commercial property investing, I'd like to invite you to join my wait list on my new training called up level commercial property investing. This will show you how you can go up a level from residential property into the commercial investing world to get massive cash flow returns and achieve a truly passive income stream that has the potential with buying one or two commercial properties to replace your earned income. If you're interested in learning how to buy commercial property without paying VAT, go and check this video out now. If you wanna know a property about that I bought, a commercial property that I bought for 384,000 pounds that generates 37,500 pounds that also has a development angle on it, go and check this video out now. Thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time.